Well, that means everything that we click to, um, I click the button again. Uh, can you guys see anything on the live stream? I don't see anything. It still says we went offline. Oh, now oh, it says yeah, live. Now, viewers. now I've got something. There's oh, an... now they see us. All right. Technical difficulties hey. solved. Welcome, everybody. We're doing this again. I'm going to have to do the whole damn intro again. Welcome, everybody, to the very first session of Blood, Sweets, and Laudanum, starring um, a bunch of the Notorious DMG crew, who we're going to do some uh, introductions for later in a moment. Uh, these guys previously did a bitter harvest, and now we've brought them back. They're going to be the, the Grim and Perilous Gaming house band when it comes to Zweihander. These guys are it. They're going to be doing it all. They're going to be dying and going insane and whatever else we decide to do. I don't, I don't know. Doing a lot of laudanum. Whatever it takes. Right. Hey, you said I doing didn't... laudanum the same way the nerdy kids say doing weed. <laughs> <laughs> I am doing the pot. <laughs> Too old to Twitch, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Yes, we are doing the laudanum. Uh, yeah, we're all on camera. That's right. So, what is Notorious DMG? It is a group of fellow content creators. They all do different things. They do podcasts. They do um, instructional how-to advice videos. They do live streams. And this group here all does a little bit of that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a chance to plug what they do before we're going to do what we do tonight mm -hmm. chuck to my left who are you what do you do where can we find you oh my gosh i gotta unmute myself already mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. i happen to be dm chuck of the defenders of cobalt uh and i have a cold so i sound a little more nasally than my kansas ass usually sounds uh spot on right there uh we <laughs> uh I don't know. We run live play games right now. We're kicking back and forth between a brand new Zweihander campaign called Death's Reformation. And uh, what's the other one? Oh, we're kicking off a new 5e campaign this Friday. So that's who we are. That's what we do. Yeah. Oh, cool fun story, bro. Thank you. Fun once. Oh. Why aren't you hosting, Chuck? Why are you uh, not hosting us? Because I'm a bad friend. Uh <laughs> let, me, let me fix that. Yeah, Chuck. Chuck runs Zweihander also, and he's he's very active. He he's a total piece of shit. And he plays with the Zweihander people sometimes. I do. I trick them into being my friends. Yeah. He pays us. He tricks them. Something about a Pumpkin King. I need to watch that episode because people keep talking about a Pumpkin King, and I'm assuming it's not Jack Skellington. No, it was fantastic and stupid, and it's amazing. You should definitely watch it. Uh, YouTube episode won't be out for a couple more weeks. Sounds good. I just realized I spelt the Twitter handle for Seth, uh, Seth wrong. I got Monday nights with two eyes. Uh, so while I fix that blunder, uh, Steven, you're below Chuck. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and what you do? Hello, internet. I am Steven the DM. I normally make YouTube videos giving advice for the world's most popular role-playing game. But tonight I will be playing the world's most fun role-playing game, Zweihander, as a uh, Waldo. Hot Lannis. take. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Waldo Lannis, the alcoholic barber surgeon halfling. So uh, yeah, looking to have some fun, guys. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. When are we gonna get a new video from you? You ask me this every single time, and I keep I telling you soon. I gotta bust your balls. It's been like six months. When did we do Stranger Things? You know what? I moved a couple times and I went to Gen Con and things piled up and hopefully uh, within a few days I'll have my next one up. All right. All right. So it's done. It's in the bag, as they as they say in the industry. Uh, it's in the can. A little bit more editing. A little bit more editing. All right. Uh, Seth. Seth, you're up, man. Oh, shit. My name is Seth. Uh, I host and produce and edit the Monday Nights podcast spelled with a K a singular I and a G-H-T-S um, it's an actual play D&D podcast we just play 3.5 instead of 5th edition because I think 5th edition is lame that's basically it we also get super drunk and uh, yeah that's the total gist of it tonight I am embodying the concept of Blort the doomsayer uh, faithful right hand man and servant to Sandow aka Bert and um yeah i fucking love plans why handed this shit kicks ass yeah man did everybody else do character introductions i was gonna save those 
Oh man, it's all right. I ruined it. I ruined it. Last but not least, we got Bert. Bert is a regular mainstay on the channel. He plays in a whole bunch of our games. But uh, Bert, plug your plug your podcast, which has been going on for what ten years? Is it ten years now? You're muted. Bert, mute. <laughs> Muting. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm Bert. Uh, Biz Lab on the interwebs. I do a little podcast called Of Steam, Steel, and Murder. Soon to have our 10-year anniversary. A little less than a month now. And we do many, many different games. Currently, we're doing a Powered by the Apocalypse game called Pig Smoke. Think Harry Potter college years. Yeah. <laughs> we do a <laughs> Fate Accelerated uh, Dresden File games and old school basic expert Dungeons and Dragons as well. And uh, for this V tonight, I am playing Sandow the Magnificent, the most beautiful ogre you will have ever met. Coming from a long line of tasty snack cake bakers, whole whole line of bakeries all over the kingdom. Yeah, I'm, I'm their face child. <laughs> Bert, you use your microphone the same way my dad uses FaceTime. He'll, he'll talk into his phone like this and you just see his forehead. It's um. I just set up this downstairs, and I haven't got everything sized yet. So I'm, I'm sorry. Thanks. I'm just making your balls. Thanks. <laughs> I like how the chat is giving Seth a hard time because of the glasses to beard ratio. He's throwing it all off. Dude, I not even shitting you. When I said I was grabbing a drink before this, after I grabbed my drink, I shaved and hopped in the shower because I was like, I need to look relatively decent for this. I swear to you, I had like a. Fucking, I could go in there into the garbage right now and pull like three inches of beard out of the garbage and show you Please all. Don't. I'm so embarrassed. I kind of think you should. He also took off yeah. his glasses because he said he looked like an anime character before the stream. Yeah, how do you guys keep your glasses from reflecting the shit out of it? Uh, we oh, take the lenses out. out right now. Yeah. They're reflecting. <laughs> yeah, my lights behind me. I don't know. Oh, is it? Is it your monitor that's reflecting on there? Yeah, that sucks. I have a <laughs> MacBook Pro, so oh, that's why. Oh, yeah, that's the. It's so that. bright and high definition that no, no, like reflective surface around can't. <laughs> All right. I literally had no joke there. I just wanted to talk. <laughs> uh, oh, beards are good on faces, not in trash. It's all right. Okay, so we did some character introductions. Who do we miss? We missed uh, Kozel. Is that the only one we didn't get an introduction on? Yeah, yeah, I didn't do my introduction. It's all right, I didn't ask for yeah. it. So you get uh, an extra experience point. Oh, shit, go me. Do I need to do it now, or can we just move on and make it a RP? mystery? One whole RP. Yeah, yeah, do your do your character introduction. Of who, like, who, who uh, is Kozel? Hey, man, like, I'm Kozel, and like... We should all just get along, man. And my hippie voice is worse with this cold man. I just like the agreements. Fuck you guys. That was great. Was that it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. it. That's, that's all that's you it. got? Oh, that's all man. I got. All right. So, okay, what is Kozel? Tell these people what you are. What's okay. your profession? Uh, Kozel is an old believer. Uh, he is old as dirt. Um, very confused about everything, uh, loves mushrooms, has a little satchel with mushrooms in it, uh, and he's got a surprise, and it's fantastic. A secret. <laughs> you can't just say that. You can't say that. <laughs> well, we're, we're live on Twitch. You can't say that. Which part? <laughs> he doesn't just have a surprise. <laughs> and it's fantastic. It's the best. Watch to find out. All right, fine. What's Waldo? Uh, I already introduced myself. Uh, what the profession are you? He's just a total dirtbag. I am a barber surgeon. I uh, have the motto that I will cut twice and measure some other time. That's right. What is Blort? Uh, Blort's a fucking doomsayer, and he loves how he can't die, and he loves that one day the world is going to end and take all of you bastards with it. So we didn't decide how Blort ended up after last session. Do you have the Black Cataract? Are you down an eye? Certainly down an eye. I like to picture the opening of this coming session like we see a rainy, muddy field surrounded in fire and destruction 
and Blort laying down, eyes closed, surrounded by fallen comrades, and suddenly his eyes open, like the cliche from every movie ever. Okay. That's very Blort to ha want to have the session start with him. Yeah. And finally, it super is. It's my whole thing. Sandow, is loving myself. You're 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 an you're an ogre. Uh and you you said that you come from a long line of, I don't know, sweet makers or whatever you would call that. Chocolatiers, I don't know. Confectionaries. What's your, what's, confectionaries, thank you. That's the word. What's your profession? I'm an entertainer. I've gone away from the family traditions, you see. That's right. All right. So last session, last session. Wow. Last time we played. So we played a bit of Harvest. We'll do. I'll do a quick recap because I'm not going to ask you guys because you probably forgot. And Chuck would know. Chuck would know what would happen if I uh, if I asked him. You How dare you? I blanks. remember everything verbatim. Verbatim. Really? Wow. Oh, I'm already drunk. Players, <laughs> my weekly players don't even remember what happened the, the week before for the most part. Um, you guys were wandering through the countryside. You ended up in a small town where a wedding was taking place, and. Um, while at that wedding, you're asked to partake in a race, which you didn't do, but you drank, you happily drank their alcohol, and Sandow was recognized by the bridegroom, and, um, he was, he was, uh, I can't remember, you weren't asked to do a job or anything, he just, he said he had work or he had something for you. Um, the next morning, you guys, uh, went to go set out towards, uh, the next town, which was Swansea, and you were Real to quick, I hate to interrupt you, is yes. this the game where everybody was, like, trying to marry kids? Yes. Ah, oh. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, fuck, that's it. man. I, I do want right. this world to end. All right. Oh, fun. Sater is keeping the uh, the bits train rolling. Or cheers. Nice. Thank you, fun. Um, so you guys were hired to go along with the bride and the groom towards their to their town, uh, and you were asked to investigate what happened to the dowry of some hemp that was supposed to have arrived uh, a day or two prior. And on the way back to the village, you uh, encountered the, the remains of the horse and wagon that was carrying the hemp. And there was a slaughter. There was a, a massacre that had taken place. The horses were dead. The men were slaughtered. The hemp was left behind. And uh, I think they were, what were they littered with arrows? Is that correct, Chuck? Yep, spot on. Littered with uh, short, gnarly arrows with black feathered fetching fletchings on them. Yeah. And the track seemed to go back towards the village that you guys were heading in the direction of i believe it's been a while uh so you guys carried on you didn't find anything really out of the ordinary just the the arrows were well it was out of the ordinary it was the massacre but the arrows were of crude design so you were thinking oh maybe we had some mutants or uh, ugly dirty mutants attack these guys uh but um the groom his best friend whose name escapes me right now was not present in the uh the slaughter what was his name chuck do you remember you just ran this damn thing. Uh, the guy who wasn't present, that yeah. was uh, Heinrich. Uh, Heinrich and his he son. He wasn't there. His son, Dieter. Is that the nasty face dirtbag whose JPEG I share in every single one of your Twitch streams? No, uh, no, no. That man. was that was Horst. Horst. Horst is a dirty fucking bastard. <laughs> I don't, they can't see our tabletop. Otherwise, I'd put a picture of Horst up there for everybody. I should make Horst my, my green screen. That's what <laughs> I, I was about to say, dude, just get like a fucking oh. like fractal of Horsts behind you. Oh, that is a fantastic idea. Oh, I'll do that next time. Okay. That was a really good idea. So you guys carried on towards Swansea, the village in question. And when you got there, uh, the village was on lockdown, but you were omitted entrance because you had, um, what the hell's the, the groom's name? Maximilian. Maximilian with you. Maximilian, you were greeted by his son and uh, Waldman. I remember that name. And uh, and Horst came and greeted you as well. And then you were asked to go outside to investigate something that was out there. And that's when you found the the bodies of Heinrich and, and Dieter, Dietrich, whatever their names were. And they were strung up like scarecrows out in the field. And uh, there was rumor that mutants had done this. Mutants had attacked. And they were sending a message. Some sort of message for some things that had happened, oh, 10 to 12 years ago. They were back for revenge. So you guys went into the town. You stayed the night there. Uh, you are given free room aboard at, at Horst's Hotel. Um, but something orcs. Yeah, well, something orcs. I don't remember the specific name. Yeah, it had to do with the number of orcs that Horst had slain 10 to 12 years ago when they attacked the village. Um... 
But you guys uncovered that the, the town was comprised of, oh, men of all ages, but all of the women folk were, oh, maybe 15 years old and younger. And you guys did some investigating, you did some poking around, and it turns out that there was a mutant attack about 12 to 15 years ago on this village. And the women, they were, they were stashed away, they were hidden away in, in, in a cave. Where, where, where the mutants couldn't get them. All the men defended the village itself and they went to go get some help. But unfortunately, the mutants found the women and they slaughtered all of them. And that explains why all the, all the, the women folk were so young here in this, in this town, this village. Ch children. Uh, look at the chat there. Like they all wanted new wives 12 years old. <laughs> yeah, children. It's true. This is why Blort hated them. Blort lashed out at Horst. Dude, fuck this city, straight up. I wish that we hadn't defended it. Uh, um, so you guys did some digging and you learned about this event that took place some years ago. And you were summoned to Maximilian's house that night. And he asked you in the morning if you would accompany his son Waldman to go um, to a nearby mountain, large hill, uh, named the Horned Monk. Oh, I remember little facts like that. Uh, to go investigate, because there was rumor that the, the, the mutant camp was nearby. The mutants that did this, that it's, that attacked his, his dowry and killed his friend. And you guys were just asked to go there and investigate. Don't attack. Don't do anything out of the, out of the ordinary. Just get numbers and come back, report back so they could fortify. So you, uh, accompanied Waldman on this journey to go investigate. Um, just as you were about to get to the overhang looking over the camp. Waldman ate an arrow to the face and instantly died. <laughs> and uh, you chased down his assailant, who was a young half-orc boy. Oh, about 12 to 15 years in age. <laughs> and uh, he was wearing this strange amulet, just like just like Waldman's, that uh, you had seen around his neck. And you're like, oh, that's odd. This is a very unique amulet or that you wear around your neck, half-orc boy. And... Um, you guys, did you, you cut off his leg, did you not? No, no, I didn't cut what? off his leg. I saved his life because his leg was going to become infected. Right, because you guys attacked him and he was injured in the leg. I mean, so, I, I did so, amputate the leg, but I, so I wasn't just cutting off his leg to be horrible. I was saving his life. That's right. I... He, he like, you like critically succeeded on your role. So it is, he is very lucky. This was like the best uh, uh, he's not lucky. Waldo is the greatest barber surgeon this side of Hagen Sneer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he was lucky that uh, Waldo was there. Yes, that's much. a that's a damn fact. As are especially, we all. Especially that I take my code of being a barber surgeon so seriously when he killed a fellow Wald man. That's right. I actually just wrote down Hagen Sneer because that is going to become canon. We are going to end up at Hagen Sneer at some point. Uh, so you took this this lad's leg to save his life, obviously. Uh, and that's when you encountered a... I think it was at this point you encountered a young girl who was looking for him. Who was... Oh, she was in her late teens, early 20s. Pretty young girl heavy game. Yeah. Yeah, but you captured her. You brought her in. You are a hero, Waldo. Uh, if, if people don't know, Bytor5 is Steven, a.k.a. Waldo, in the chat. Um, did you capture her? What would you do? You subdued her. And oh, uh, no, no, we we just talked with her and she was friendly to us. Yeah, why she had a lot great because you had her sit her, her brother tied up and his leg was cut off. Well, amputated. yeah, we, we but convinced I, I her to, yeah, she okay. was to take us back that we to saved with, her brother's mother. Life. Okay, yeah, now you guys fill in the gaps. You guys remember, did she recognize Waldman at that point? Because it turns out that she was one of the lady folk from the town 10 to 15 years ago who was killed. And she recognized her brother Waldman there on the ground with an arrow in his face. I think she did recognize him, yeah. Yeah, and she was also wearing one of those amulets. So she brought you down to the little camp um, to meet Mother, as she was called, to everyone else. And there was a, there was an orc warband that had just left as you guys entered. And um, you were offered some stew. I can't remember. Somebody ate the stew. The stew was boss. Oh. Yeah, Blort ate the stew, but he did, was not taken in by the effects of it. So she had some mind-controlling stew that she was using on these orcs and mutants. Um, and she revealed that they had returned. They had not perished so many years ago. Um, and that she had returned to come slaughter the menfolk. Because they were sold out 
to save the men's lives. They sold the women and the and the girls away. Uh, so she came back with a troop of orcs to kill the men and exact revenge. So you guys said, hey, these guys sound like real assholes. So let's go back and uh, let's go do, the, do it ourselves. We'll kill them before those orcs get there. Gorilla to hunt. Thank you for the cheer. Wow, that's awesome. Gentleman and Chuck, do you yeah, <laughs> Chuck? Do you know? Do you know? Who shout is? out Gorilla Boy. Uh, you can see Gorilla the Hun on the start of our new campaign tomorrow night. There you go, <laughs> Gentleman and Chuck. So you guys went back to the village and said, "Hey, we got to get in front of this orc war party because when they get here, they're just going to slaughter everybody because they're under the command of that delicious stew." So you guys made it there, and then you were like. It took a few hours, and you were like an hour ahead of the party, something like that, 20 minutes, I don't, I can't remember. But you guys sat there deliberating in the dark, outside the this, the town walls, what you wanted to do. You fired the odd arrow and completely missed, and then some of you decided to scale the walls. And I'll let you guys take it from there, because I don't really remember the events too clearly, because it kind of went chaotic at that so point. if I remember correctly, we kind of split into two parties. Yes. Where uh, Kozel and Blort just decided to uh, fuck with some orcs. Yeah, we fucked off from the whole adventure. <laughs> we just stood outside and fought and died, basically. And no. the true hero of our story, Waldo Lanis, uh, arguably the only hero in the group, although Sandow did have a, a good wrecking, reckoning. Sandow is a fucking saint. How dare you? <laughs> he, he did pull out a sword and use those uh, ogre muscles uh, very finely. But Waldo Lanis, the true hero of Vorberg, uh, went to Mother and convinced her to stop the attack, thanks to some lucky crits. You you did crit on your sweet talking, and uh, yeah, you halted the assault. But that's not before Blort ate, like, a ton of arrows. Yeah, first off, Blort got three consecutive critical hits against the leader of the army, which did basically nothing because I am a puny, weak gnome. <laughs> yep, this is true. <laughs> but you ate a bunch of... You were up on the wall. or You were up on the wall. You got peppered those. You were a distraction while the others were supposed to go in the house and get Maximilian and kill them. So you climbed up on the wall and you were shouting everybody and arrows were being rained down upon you and you ate a whole bunch of arrows uh, and the Kozel proceeded to light those arrows on fire that were in you. Did he not? Did that not take place? Yeah, no, that happened. We needed that extra oomph, right? Yeah. I just wanted to feel the pain so bad at that point. I thought that this would not continue, so I was trying as hard as I possibly could to get Blort to die. <laughs> you tried hard. Um, yeah, so that happened. Uh, is that how you get your black cataract or was it fighting that big orc that Sandow ended up like the, downing? the big commander orc at the very end? I don't remember exactly the, the situation leading up to it, but basically I remember I was standing in a field next to a wagon of some kind, swinging my heavy maul at this, this grand orc and me and him hit each other like with critical hits consecutively for three or four rounds. And it was insanity. And then I was at like 40 or something on my damage threshold, basically dead. And you told me that I had lost an eye. Yeah, we rolled on the wounds tracker, and you lost an eye at that point. You had a black cataract. Uh, and you went down, but Sando stepped in and, like, just annihilated this guy. Sando got his his nice, clean clothes. I think, if I remember clothes. correctly, I think Sando, or maybe Sando and Kozel, stepped outside into the field of battle and were like, wait, she said it's all over, like, no more fighting. And I just oh, kept yeah. swinging my hammer. But I, I think you killed Horst before this happened also. Oh, that was my number one objective for all of the last game, was to destroy him in every sense that I possibly could. Yes, that was mission number one. You're like, okay, well, this has ended. I want to find Horst and kill him. Which you did. The that's a fucking played. rat bastard. That's all I can say. You guys really hated Horst. I'm going to get his picture up here next time. If I do it, it'll it'll go on the overlay, the zoom, and all that. and uh, I won't. But next time, Horst will be looking at the audience and it'll be creepy those eyes those dead eyes staring at them. dude straight up real talk don't do that <laughs> why it's it's an old image it's not copywritten we can get away with it <laughs> horse is just a criminal and a cancer upon all of tabletop gaming <laughs> we sneak them into every game now all right so that is a recap of what took place before that i'll put some links somewhere around here where you guys can go back and watch those sessions but we are now going to kick off the ongoing from this point. So you guys saved the village. The men were slaughtered. 
all the men that, that, that took place in the slaughter years ago. So there's now a village of young women. Swansea. <laughs> and uh, no men. Young illegal women being the key word there. Oh, come on now. What, why illegal? They're 15 and under. Under age. Yes. Illegal in that sense. All right, I got you. I what got is you. the age yeah, of no, consent in Vorburg? Swansea? Oh, no. Is it Vorburg? Oh, it's Vorburg. Oh, Vorburg, man, I've been saying yeah. the wrong places. Yeah, Vorburg. Uh, I don't the know. The hero of Vorburg. You, Waldo is the hero of Vorburg. Waldo has been... And I will never let anyone forget it. I'll tell you what, Waldo. You've actually been uh, bestowed Maximilian's mansion whenever you're passing through this area. It is yours oh. to use. Wait, passing through, why would I leave? I have a mansion. <laughs> well, well, there's upkeep on the mansion for one. <laughs> there is upkeep, and you know, you've been here for a few days now. Well, we'll say about a week since this thing is all cleared up. You guys have helped the town clean up the dead, the orcs, and, and the people. We drank all the alcohol in the mansion. You have drank all of the alcohol in the mansion. Swansea's the other campaign. Matt is going into GM hell. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I have to keep track of too many things. Um, it's purgatory. GM purgatory. It's a minor sin. Uh, so, but, you know, people have been passing through and coming through because this is a, a well-used trade route. So people have come through here and they've asked, like, what happened? What's going on? The, the, the walls of this town, this village are in terrible shape. They've been attacked. They've been burned. People have shown up the next day when there's still bodies littered about of orcs and men. So the tale of Sandow or Waldo the hero, Waldman the hero of Warburg Waldo are being spread. Lawrence. Waldo uh, I only go I'm by sorry. my full name now. That's why I call you Waldo. Waldo Lanis. Are spreading. Tales are spreading of your heroics. Your bravery. But rumors are also spreading of what sort of deal was struck with mutants and orcs. The vile sort of folk who should not be allowed to live and carry on through this land. So you have people who are cheering you on and singing of your bravery, but they are also asking, well, what sort of dark deal did you make with these things Waldo Lanas so rumor is also spreading of the dark arts that Waldo Lanas may practice and what sort of vile deal he has made with these mutants now now so Sandow's entertaining specialty is storytelling we would have crafted a finely honed detailed report in story and song to spread yeah, forth. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can try. You are an entertainer. So you're going right. to try Roll and curb curb those 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 nasty rumors, right? Just rumors cuz none of you guys were near Waldo when he marched over there. The brave, what are you again? You're a gnome? No. I'm a halfling. A halfling. Blorts the gnome. <laughs> This brave little halfling charged up, walked up through the battle, stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mother, who was leading the charge, commanding the others, and with just a few simple words, ended the battle. Nobody heard what took place. I'm oh, a sorcerer. You you could very well be one. Meanwhile, Kozel's like, <laughs> What? Magic? Better you than me, man. Dirty word. So, the town has also given you a horse and carriage as a thank you. And they've also given you a load of hemp to take with you on your way as payment. Because they don't have much money to give you. So, they've given you a, uh, a bushel of hemp along with a cart. And this isn't the kind you smoke. This is not the kind you smoke. This is the kind you can sell for crafting. <laughs> They'll give you the kind that you can smoke as well. Hey. <laughs> hey. That's why it took us a few days to leave. Yeah, right? Making some ropes. That's right. Oh, uh, I don't know if you can do that on stream, Blur. <laughs> I'm just going to just gonna throw it out there. Uh, I don't I don't think that's Twitch approved. Might have to might have to do some editing here. <laughs> I don't even know what you mean. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> but yes, hemp. And the smoking and the crafting kind. So you guys, with the rumor of possible witch hunters and people looking into what took place here, investigators, inquisitors, 
uh, you guys have decided to uh, maybe head on down the road and let the heat die down a little bit. So yeah, guys... I think we should uh, put the mansion up for sale, guys, because uh, I can't afford to pay the taxes on this thing. Yeah, right? Hey, man, I paid taxes once, and it wasn't too bad, man. Oh, so you'll cover them for the mansion now, since it's not too bad? All your property taxes do is further the hold and the strangle of the government upon the people of Vorberg. You know what, Blort? While you're over there not seeing, why don't you uh, go get more alcohol and put it in the wagon so we can go? I was already doing that, thank you. I say we strip the place down, find everything valuable, stick it in that cart <laughs> as we leave town. You're the boss. <laughs> yes, this is what I require. Yeah, so you're going to just, like, strip the mansion clean? Blort picks up a couch and just starts walking outside. <laughs> <laughs> I do think we need to rene renegotiate the whole uh, who is the employer and who is the employee. Now oh! Mansion. Well, uh, I think rank I here. still have more gold than you. It's I am until gold. you sell it's the mansion. Yours. It's you your have no gold. liquid funds. <laughs> I am forever and always in service to the Sandow, the Candy Ogre. The Trust Fund Ogre over That's here. That's right. Uh, well, I, I'm going to take Kozel, and Kozel is now in service to me. Mm, Kozel is in service to me. <laughs> hey, man. I don't think I should be the boss anymore, man. No one was saying you would be the boss. You, Kozel, just start servicing me. Come on. Oh, man, you're going to have to pay me more than Sandow did, man. Oh, I'm losing it. <laughs> uh, I will pay you half of my mansion. You got any suet, man? I have some hemp. No, man, I want like, you got, like some animal fat for cooking? Yeah, I think we have some in the mansion. Cool, man, I'll take that and you don't have to work for me anymore. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I guess it's yours. Cool, man. I hope you don't want me to pay taxes on this. No, I guess I'll cover it. Cool, man. You're the best. And I'll go find the kitchen and get myself that, uh, rendered animal fat and a little jar to keep it in yes i know what you're doing i'm just gonna look befuddled and break <laughs> one of the bottles that i already loaded into the carriage i know what kozel's up to i know what he's doing all right you've got some rendered animal fat i uh, sure do and yeah, uh, if, uh... If our if questions are starting to be asked and the things seem to be going south, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's take the, all the the portable valuables we can find in uh, in the middle of the night one night we can just uh, yeah. leave town. Yeah, maybe head to Hoggensneer. It is the land of my people. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. like a tasty land. Uh, yeah, so you guys load up your, your, your wagon that you've been given. So, yeah, you throw in the, the finest sofa, Blort. Uh, you take, you know, any, uh, any precious belongings. You take some, some candelabras, some, some furniture, some antique furniture. If you can find, uh, you know, there's some fine china and some silverware. You throw it all in there. Don't waste good liquor. But they've drank our, you guys have already drank all the liquor, didn't you? He was saying to make Molotov cocktails. Oh, yeah, that's a waste. Come on now. It's going into their bellies, all of the booze. So the you know you get asked a few questions like, oh, where are you guys going? What are you doing? Why where, where, where are you going with all those belongings? Why are you packing them up? Are they asking the group or one yeah, of us? Yeah, oh yeah, like as you guys are doing this, you have you have people drop by and they'll ask like, oh, what's going on? Why 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 are you why are you loading? Things you up would people? dare to question the heroes who rescued your pitiful civilization from the brink of demise. Yeah, I'm I'm the hero of Vorberg. He's the and hero he's of Vorberg. Me what I'm doing? I am saving your butts again. Oh, this is a twelve-year-old girl. She starts to weep and runs away. 
<laughs> you jerk. <laughs> I, you're the one. I am the hero of Vorberg, little girl. <laughs> hey, man, you should oh, be nicer. That was somebody's wife, man. <laughs> yeah, she really should be nicer. You're right. These girls, she's now a widow. Have no respect anymore. Yeah, she's now a widow at 12 years old. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So yeah, they're asked they are questions, and you guys just kind of fluff it off, and they ask, "Well, will you return?" Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll. Who? First of all, who said I was leaving? Okay. Second of all, I will be here when you need me the most, always, because. I am the hero of Vorberg. The oh. hero of Vorberg, <laughs> says Blort with like super thick air quotes. Yeah. yeah what's what's this this save one city and his head expands. <laughs> this is Horst's <laughs> wife that has now stopped by and asked you. She's, oh, oh, you did so much. Unfortunately, I lost my husband in that fight. And <laughs> he was so brave. Blort laughs out loud just like I just did. He was so brave so many years ago when he killed all of those orcs. He I, was lying to you, you teenager. You must travel far from this land, escape everything you've ever known of the cursed individual known as Horst. Okay, listen, 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 listen. Okay, listen. I, I can't save everyone, all right? You're not the only person who lost a husband here, all right? I did the best I could, all right? Get off my back. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, sorry. Well, thank you for everything you did for the village um we do appreciate it we, we we'd surely all be slaughtered if if you hadn't stepped in that's what i keep saying oh. that's just poor poor horse and she 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 brings the sword that the, the the big court sword that was hanging above the door and she no, brings no, it to you no she doesn't i, I grabbed that oh, sword Sando last has it. i was about to say <laughs> if she has, has that sword i'm just very casually taking it from the 12 year old girl because she can't Sando. stop me Sandow was slicing that thing very elegantly. <laughs> Fon Sater says, put up a statue of Horst and worship Horst as a god. Oh, maybe she'll use the funds from the uh, the slaughtered orcs. That was the name of it. She'll use the, the funds. From the, you know what? I like it, Fawn. This is where we're getting the chat involved. She goes, I I want to erect a, a, a memory to my fallen husband who was so brave. I just shit so on the floor. There it is. <laughs> And and I plan to use the money that we've saved to to erect a, some sort you know of. How old is she? Like thirteen? And he fucking married her, dude. 13. I will go stab his dead fucking body in a coffin. Fuck this guy to death. No, no, I I plan to to commission a a bust to be made of him to put up in the town square. To in the middle of that and... sentence, Blort puts his hand over her whole face <laughs> and he pushes her in the mud. Isn't your hand tiny? You're like a gnome. I don't give a fuck. I'll whip her. I it's no horse statues. I can't believe this madness. Young lady, with the shortage of menfolk about, uh, you might best spend that income into shoring up your your food in in stores. You, after all, don't have these backs anymore to to, to harvest your 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 goods. You could you throw those look coins. To your own city here and spend your money more wisely, much more wisely. Oh, you know, buying Sand a pretty hat Sandow. would be spent more wisely. Sandow, we can we can hire more <laughs> more hired agree. help to work the fields for us, like we did. But uh, I think we must we must remember what took place here today, and there'll be a place for 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 Waldo. Oh, well, if you want, I mean, I wouldn't argue. Yeah. Well, if you insist upon this, I suppose you must have this then. And I'll give her back her husband's sword. Oh, <laughs> your no. coins would be she, better spent thrown down a well wishing for a better she, life. She she takes the sword and she, she, she kneels down on a knee and she presents it to Waldo. Waldo, please, as the savior of our village, I, I, I want you to have this. Of course. I mean, how could I say no? And I just reach for the blade. <laughs> All right. You reach for the blade. It's a big, huge sword compared to your small stature. Yeah, I, I might accidentally uh, cut myself a little bit on the edge. And sure. And uh, uh, once I get a hold of the handle when I'm done seeing double, 
um, it, it just kind of like drops to the ground, and I'll just start dragging it away with me. <laughs> <laughs> Through the mud, the mud blood and shit that is everywhere. All right, is, yeah, is this just... thing like taller than I am? Oh yeah, it's it's way longer than you are in height. All right, so I'll like heave it onto a shoulder and just drag. All right. She thanks she thanks all of you for what you did, and she says, "I must go back to tending the 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 slaughtered orcs." Thank you again. She scuttles off after being tossed in the mud by Blort. <laughs> We're such good heroes. I hate every single now. individual aspect of this city equally. <laughs> it's just a small village. It's not a city. You're like regional Re regardless. heroes. Regardless. You're regional heroes. Sandow uh, is just trying to herd everyone out before they decide to burn the city down. <laughs> Max Maximilian's uh, sister has been driven out of the mansion. And she is, you can see her across the street, sitting there with her arms crossed, looking at all of you with resent. She doesn't say anything. She is... Just kind of leaning up against a building. and She she is none too pleased with having her family mansion stripped from the family and given to the Can group of you. Can I throw a rock at her and tell her to get away from my freaking mansion? You, you could. Uh, I, I, yeah. I, not I mean, a rock. I'm, I'm probably not going to hit when because did you guys... I'm seeing double or triple at yeah. this point. When did you guys become but, uh, such terrible people? I don't, I don't remember I will this. not be shamed in front of my own mansion. I am the hero of Vorberg. You're not wrong. The hero of Vorberg. <laughs> sure, you just whip a rock in her direction and it hits off the building next to her and she just kind of... Go on, get! She shakes her head and just wanders away, glaring at you. Uh, Fawn brought up a good point that this village does need a sweets shop. Uh, I believe that every single individual involved with any aspect of the previous social standing of the adult males and young females of this city previously should be slain. They do not deserve candy. She, she did not live here. Uh, when uh, when that took place, but uh, yeah, you could slay her if you want. Uh, I'm not 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 personally by me. I <laughs> she was not. She yeah. She did not live here. She was not here when the when the treachery took place. If you remember, the hero of Vorberg. Pack it up, guys. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> so nightfall is coming down. And, uh, yeah, it, it starts to turn. It was a dreary day to begin with, but it turns into a dark, stormy night. Oh. Oh, do you hear that? Oh, I rain. love this fucking vibe right now. I feel like we're fall. hanging out around a campfire, dude. We're just telling stories about how the first time we made out was in the elevator of our high school that led up to the college that was above it, dude. This is so deep. Hey, man, you weren't supposed to tell anyone about that, man. <laughs> hey, man, dude. All right. <laughs> so you guys set off into the night with rumor of treachery and witchcraft at hand. And you have a wagon full of hemp and all sorts of preci precious goods. And you head off into the night, and it's dark and stormy. And your 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 wagon is having a hard time keeping in with the the ruts that are being for that are formed in the road. And you're going slower pace than you would like. And you travel deep into the night, 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., and you're not finding any signs of somewhere to stop. And you continue on in this horrible, treacherous weather. And every once in a while, when lightning cracks and breaks, you swear you catch a glimpse of something off in the trees, keeping pace with you as you're heading down the road. It looks like oh, multiple shapes. And you hear strange howls and calls being let off in the trees and where these shapes are coming from as you, as you carry on down the road. Um, go ahead and, uh, I need everybody to make me a routine survival test. We're going to see if, uh, if you guys have come to this terrible weather. The storm coming down, you're cold, you're freezing, you're wet, it's miserable. Am I conscious at this point? Uh, barely. Bert has a critical failure. Uh... <laughs> I'm so, the one who's been dragging the cart, probably. <laughs> so remember, we have fortune and misfortune points to spend every session. We have fortune points equal to the number of players plus one. 
When you spend one of those, you can re-roll a roll, is one of the things you can do. But when you spend it, it becomes a misfortune point, and I get it, and I get to use it for the same sort of purposes. So you can choose to re-roll here and spend a fortune point if you want. You don't have to. I'm um, just throwing it out there. You can, Or you can just take the the elements beating down on you and see what, what happens. So I imagine that uh, Sandow has been uh, dragging the cart, and finally it's like, oh, for the... No, we're, we're stopping here. Here! <laughs> the only thing on Earth that Blort truly loves is Sandow, so, like, my small, frail, beaten gnome body is, like, trying to help pull the cart, but I'm basically just, like, making it more difficult for Sandow. Okay, yeah, so you're you're dredging on, and um, you guys are going to take um, some some damage off of this potentially so let's go ahead and see how the the elements affect you i mean i passed my roll so this is this is only i for the, passed my roll this, <laughs> this is only for the people who failed so that would be only sandow if i am correct Everybody else, Pat. I it's not like we need him. Role. He's only the face and muscle of our group. Yeah, he's he's pulling the wagon. He's, he's the brawn, the brains, the, the face, the muscle. <laughs> he's like the horse. Is everything sitting about our group that isn't an accessory, <laughs> right? The horse is sitting next to you guys while Sandow pulls the uh, the wagon. So Sandow, you take six or sorry, I'm sorry, five points of physical peril. Does that that doesn't even I think scratch your 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 track? Does it? No. Okay, so you're not even affected, but you're cold, you're shivering, it's miserable, and like you said, you say, okay, guys, shadows and noises and howling be damned, I'm stopping right here. We're making camp in this miserable condition in this weather. Just pull some of this canvas over the top of this cart and we can sleep beneath it. I mean, weren't we already doing that? Where are we? Are we there yet? No, no, we, we are not. We, we are not. Well, keep going then. You just keep pulling, and I'll I'll, I'll make sure we get the right way. Hey, man. So I'll, I'll pull the cart off the road. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you pull the cart aside, and you can hear, like, baying and howling and whooping and noises in the, in the trees and in the bushes around you as you kind of sit there, and Sando's like, I'm done. And there's a <laughs> flash of lightning, and you see... A number of silhouettes standing there with the the latest flash of lightning you can you can make out three regular sized four regular sized men and it takes you a moment for it to sink in what you're looking at one one of them when the light flashes you see this this man standing there the eyes on his head are actually attached to long stalks and they're bobbing around back and forth Another seems to have tentacles for hands. While the other two, their bodies are covered in thick fur all over, almost like mongrels or beast men. And they're just standing there staring at the group of you, not making a move. I turn to the group and I say, literally nothing about this can be good. What do you <laughs> propose we do? Is that a racing snail and a bat? Did you say racing snail? Hey guys, let's just like say hi and stuff. They might be nice. From the Kozel, other I truly love the degree to which you are positive about our <laughs> surroundings at all times, but I believe that the man with the tentacles for hands desires no pleasantries from us. Hey, do you guys have any alcohol? Because we're running out. You bastard, why would you? <laughs> from the other side of the road when you call out, from the other side of the road, you hear a, lar a loud snort <sniffs> and a growl. And again, with a lightning flash, you see a large beast. It's got the head of a bovine, and it's covered in thick, scaly skin. And it grab them, he commands as the mutants launch forward to you, and he closes in from the other side of the road. Did he say he was getting the alcohol for us? Do or... you want... All he said was... Do, do you want to, to try... To be fair, we have played for uglier crowds. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to try and escape via a chase? 
Or do you want to stand your ground with these horrible creatures in the middle of the, uh, middle of the night in this storm? Oh, we're not I will abide by any decree that Sandow puts down. Can we even outrun a racing snail? Why do you keep saying racing snail? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm following Sandow's lead as well. What is right, Sandow? Well, Sandow will fish around for that god awfully large sword. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, that's mine. That's mine. She gave that to me. When you can use it, you can have it. We're gonna we're gonna lose the PCs right here and now. Oh no. Uh, I, I did not expect you guys death. to stand and fight, but hey, well, Matt, let's do this. I mean, you're, you're setting it up for it to be nothing but. I mean, you're describing how bad the weather is. I'm exhausted simply from walking you through it. We're not going to be able to run. Blort <laughs> charges the tentacle-handed man. You, you do have a horse. swings his heavy maul. Fuck him, dude. Fuck this whole there situation. We're blasting these bastards. All right. There's no way you would have given us loot and let us keep it this early these, on. These bastards. Yeah, are you crazy? I wasn't going to give you guys that. That loot? Are you kidding? Uh, <laughs> uh, do I have warp tokens and all that good stuff? No, of course not. I need to add you guys to the tracker. Uh, okay. This will work. This will work. I have dealt four damage to the tentacle bastard. <laughs> have you now? All right. Yeah, I'm staying in the way back just in case someone needs some heals later. I'm using generic tokens because I did not get them set up beforehand in here. Not thinking we would get into combat, but hey, that's how it goes. Uh, who I, mean, I won't be in combat if I can avoid it. Uh, I'm way back there. Who wants to be who on the initiative tracker? And uh, go ahead and, and roll the initiative, because this is happening. A d10 plus your... What Do we have to click on our tokens before we roll initiative? Uh, it's three plus your PB. Three plus your PB. And let me know what you guys roll for your, or what you get for your. All right, what's what's PB? Perception bonus? Perception? Yes. And that's the bonus. number next to the big circle, correct? Yes. That is 13 because I critically succeeded. Ha ha ha. Plus three. All right, uh, so Kozel, you got a 16? Is that correct? Yep, that's it. 16 for me. Uh, Waldo, you got a 8 total? Yeah, I mean, I get a plus 7. <laughs> wow. Uh, let's get that storm going again. Uh, Sando, you got so a 10? Mysterious. You got a 10. Who am I missing? Blort. Blort, what did you get total? Thirteen. Sorry, I had roll twenty open and I'm incredibly intoxicated. <laughs> uh and mutants. Uh, Are they mutants though? I mean that's a little harsh. They just look a little different. This this uh this futuristic helicopter will represent my mutants on the initiative tracker. <laughs> you are not even fucking joking. That's a straight up helicopter. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't kidding. I was just grabbing random tokens just to use in roll 20 for this. All right. Well, this campaign's ending early, guys. Yeah, uh, we're not going to be blood sweets and laudanum very long because the sweets part might blood. die tonight. <laughs> Blort says, I believe that is an Apache helicopter. We are truly destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me roll a d10 here. Just remember I'm in the back. Yes. Uh, what's my initiative bonus on these fellas? I'll be the cute elf girl token. That's, uh, that's, isn't that's that what helicopter. I gave you? Isn't that what I gave you for yours? Uh, yes it is. So, Kozel, you were first with your 16, so... It was like, ah, get them, this big, large, bovine, scaly-covered abomination from one side of the road. And closest to you guys are the four mutants. You got the two mongrel men covered in hair from head to toe. You've got the one with the tentacles for hands, and then you've got the other one with its eyes up on stalks bobbing around, and they kind of start shambling towards you. Go 
that room, they have horses and hemp. Very important Santa, cargo. Santa, don't look it in the eye. Uh, which one, Blurt, which one did you yell out that you were charging at again? I will destroy the tentacle-handed enemy. Okay. Uh, big pig dude. Cow dude standing cow. in the road. Yeah, big cow dude standing in the road. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit of my animal fat out, and uh, I'm going to snap my fingers with it. And he's going to fall down. Yes. Uh, I, I knew exactly uh, what you were doing there. So it just... He just collapses in the mud. And you automatically critically succeed or just succeed on your spells? I automatically critically succeed. So, so normal success, he drops all his shit. Critical success, he drops all his shit. And then he falls prone. Okay. So... Oh! Yeah, this, this dude... Ah! Yeah, he never got to use this last time. Kozel is like OP. Yeah. Uh, and once he's on the ground, I'm going to go to a horse... And start getting it unhitched from the fucking wagon. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were going to turn into a horse. I was like, what don't I know about you, Kozel? What aren't this, you telling us? So this That's thing, for Act 2. This thing drops Just into the mud. into the other one. And it starts, like, it's covered in mud, and it's rolling around. And, sort of, and it's, like, thrashing around uh, after Kozel does this. Um, I'm going to say you guys did not notice. Kozel, were you, were you being, like up front and flashy about this or were you just kind of like subtly just like snap the finger and like this dude drops subtle as shit i don't think it's okay. uh yeah i don't think i know enough to make a big deal about it or not to be honest even if you weren't being subtle i probably would have missed it anyways well this storm is going on also so if you were if he, even if he was being flashy is gonna have people roll to even see if they notice it because you guys are being rushed at both sides by these mutant creatures there's a storm going on. It's miserable. So, yeah, Kozel, Kozel just, like, you just kind of put your hand in your pocket, get some fat all over it, and snap your fingers. And this thing drops. Roar! Kill yeah. them! I'll get to that horse like, guys, I think we should go, man. These guys don't seem so friendly. Yeah, the horse is going nuts. The horse is just, like panicking and skittering about and uh, it is ready to go as well. So, let's go to the Apache helicopter because it's their turn. So, you've got actually, actually, you've got you've got the downed bovine man and you've got these four mutants that are his minions. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a test to see if they flee because they have just watched their Commander be dropped. In Wait, front you said of there me. were five total. There are. That's a fucking problem. Four, four total. Four plus the unconscious one. Yes. That well, he's not unconscious. He's rolling around in the mud. So there's four like regular sized humans with like eye stalks and hair and tentacles, and then there's like one big cow, scaly skinned mutant on the other side of the road. Sandow, this is the last time I let you decide if we go into combat. Yeah, right. Sandow's tired. Sandow had every reason to stop. Oh! What? Critical failure. There's like, oh, 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 what's going on? Oh, no. Oh, no. He's he's down. Ah! We have no chance against these guys. And, uh, yeah, they start to flee. They take off back into the bush while the, the big bovine creatures oh, oh, get back here you fools get back here you cowards and that I'm gonna rush up to the bovine guy to and I think he's having a heart attack so you, I need you, to amputate his heart are you <laughs> Kozel's like getting the horses when you're like let's go man and Waldo hops off and saunters over this bone saw um I, I, I think you're having a heart attack. Just relax, okay? I'll take care of this. I I wow. can I am a almost doctor barber surgeon. I will save your life. Just don't move. Almost doctor barber surgeon. Is that what you how you just describe yourself? I mean I'm pretty much a doctor. I'm a doctor, yeah. Okay. I give haircuts and I amputate hearts. <laughs> you amp you know you 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 break hearts. He's having <laughs> he's having a heart attack, 
So there's something clogging an artery, and I need to get that out. You are a brave little one. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. You want to go over there and and uh, and try to hurt him? No, no. I'm trying to help him. I'm trying to okay. help him. The others are shouting, "Let's go! Let's go!" Uh, go ahead. You can try and attack uh, this thing. Attack? I, I'm doing medicine here. You're administering medicine. Okay. All right. So what should I be rolling? Uh, roll me your attack. Prone, do you get bonuses for that? I'm trying to find it here. Of course, I don't have my condition things. Handy. I get bonuses for um, helping with uh, wounds. You are not helping because he's not wounded. <laughs> All right, so is it standard then? Yeah, do a standard test. I'm trying to find um, prone on here. Chuck, do you have it handy, what your prone does to this guy? Of course, I... Went to go grab my GM screen before this, and I forgot to grab it. I'm looking for it now. I mean, he oh. just looks like he's having a heart attack to me. He just fell over for no reason. My so. GM screen is right next to me in my little handy damn thing. Are they in there, the conditions? I think Adam's here, too. He can tell us. Prone on the ground and suffers an additional D6 fury die in damage. Oh. But does he take damage for falling like that, uh, Chuck? Does he take damage for falling? Does it say it does damage? No, it doesn't do any damage. But okay. anyone who's prone, if they take uh, damage, it's an extra D6 Fury Die. One D6 extra Fury Die. All right. Oh, Jeff has it. Extra Fury Die. Thanks, Jeff. And thank you for confirming, Adam. All right. So, yeah, you, you hit him. Um, do your damage for me, please. It's a D6. So an right, extra where D6 is that on the die. So, or do I just roll the 2D6? But the Fury die is for wounds, right? Yes. D6 Fury. Oh, and damage. That's just damage. Yeah, so you're going to roll two so, Fury dice. Two D6 wow, you have two plus... chances of, of exploding, plus whatever your... I just your... rolled 2D6? Where and then is plus it on whatever the your... Is brawn bonus for you? Okay. So what two... weapon are you using? I'm using my scalpel, of course. Uh, that has fast, so I think that should be your AB for your damage. Okay, that's agility then. Yeah. Uh, fast means they have a minus 10% chance, base okay. chance to dodge or parry. Oh, it's finesse for that finesse or whatever is the it is. AB. Yeah. So it is still brawn. Oh, holy shit! They both exploded! Uh, you get to roll both those d6s again. Oh, fuck! And not as good on the next one. Combat bonus. Um, Adam says combat bonus. Oh, it's three either way. Okay. So, 15, 16, 17, 18 damage? What? Dude, that's insane. Uh, what does this look like? What are you doing? Tell me, describe I this. I am attempting to uh, break through the sternum to get to that artery, and I just want to nick the artery so that I can get that block out that's causing the heart attack. Uh, <laughs> I also, there, well done, I just want to point out that you have the uh, talent knife work. So when you deal damage to a foe using a weapon with fast quality, they have to resist a toughness or they begin to bleed. <laughs> Love me to make a toughness test here. Thank you for uh, reminding him. We're getting to know our yes, characters was... again, aren't we? And the rules. It's been a while I since we've done this. About knives. My bad. Uh, where is your toughness? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> hey, we learned today what happens when things bleed, and this guy is bleeding. Oh, we sure <laughs> shit did. <laughs> I cut him too much. Woo! <laughs> right. Pulling out the bandages. <laughs> uh, holy shit, Waldo. Um, yeah. So, you, you, right at the sternum, you you you, ins you insert your your scalpel and you make an incision, and blood just starts to pool and pour and gush out. Uh, you can see bone exposed. Um, go ahead and roll me. Roll me a d6. 
And then roll me another d6. We're rolling for injury. Hey, roll me another d6. Five and six. Roll me, roll me a d100. Twenty-four. I really didn't want to kill this guy. So when this thing fell over, um, Kozel, when you knocked it over into the mud, even though this is more related to whatever Waldo's doing, almost Waldo's got a better idea. So he, he busted his knee. Uh, so he's rolling around and clutching his knee, and oh, he's trying to get up, and he's he's just kind of like rolling in the mud, and he's unable to like put any weight on his knee. Hey, there's a puppy on the screen. Um, yeah, he's got a busted kneecap. So maybe maybe he did something to his knee, or maybe we'll give this to Kozel. But it's rolling around with a busted kneecap, uh, and he's also bleeding. He's bleeding out. So unless you want to stop this bleeding, it's gonna die. Uh, <laughs> I, I would like to stop the bleeding, and let's give him the knee. Give the knee to Kozel. Uh, no, I cannot real. take the knee. Uh, you it's, did technically, all the heavy it's technically your injury. What's that? It's technically Waldo's injury. It was on his. Yeah. On his roll. Okay. Can we just say that he he just twisted his knee when he fell? Because I, I I'm trying to save his life here. Are you now? Wow. You... I, I am going to uh, attempt to stop the bleeding with uh, bandages. Because I, I needed to nick the artery to get the clot out, and now I need to stop the bleeding so he lives. So three AP is needed to stop, so you cannot stop at this turn. Maybe next turn, guys. <laughs> it's going to die oh, by then. Yeah, it will. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, so we're over to I'm Sando. I'm so Sando. sorry. I'm trying to save you. I'm so, so sorry. Yeah, Sando, you're witnessing this. Uh, Waldo saunters over, puts his knife towards the chest of this bovine creature, and starts slitting open its scaly... Uh, chest and blood is pooling out and it's screeching and in in pain and Waldo's apologizing um, and it looks like he's so, trying to stop the bleeding. What do you want to do? Uh, uh, knowing uh, Waldo <laughs> and that he is going to try and save this thing, I'll say, I believe he is uh, suffocating on his own blood. Here, I, I, we need to relieve the pressure in his lungs and I just kind of lean on the sword and just try and <laughs> cut him open with it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I'm, you don't even need to roll. This thing's lying there. It's got a busted knee. It's bleeding. Um, yeah, you put your sword into it. Um, and unless Blort wants to do anything to interject and step in... Uh, it seems to be working. Look, the blood. It's coming out of the lungs. Sandow can do as he pleases. Sure. So uh, Sandow is, <laughs> is, putting, is putting the sword down into it. Blort just kind of shrugs. He's pleased with his master and what he's doing. And, uh, yeah, by the time, Waldo, you're, you're able to, to act again, you get your wits to you, this thing has bled out and, and, and breathed its last breath. It just uh, uh, exhales. You can't save them all, but that was good thinking, Sandow. I, I didn't think about relieving the lungs like that. You, you should be a <laughs> doctor. Well, sadly, my first patient's died. Better luck next time. Wow. You know what? My first, like, 12 patients died. So you, you just can't save them all. Don't let it get to you. You did a good job, champ. How many patients have you thing. had, man? Uh, about 13. <laughs> that is not very many. Oh, you know what? You know what? He's number 14. He's number 14. Cause, that uh, is still not a, a quantity that would allow me to trust you performing on my body in any aspect. Hey, I am like so much better than the competition, man. And my prices are. I just, are I so just saw you stab him in the chest. Uh, for medical reasons, I, I, th he had like gunk in his heart. Gunk in his heart. Out, so that he can live. Oh right. Was was the gunk blood? Well, I mean, technically, yes. Okay, well, blood, I know enough to say that blood goes in your heart, and it's a well, good thing when it's in there, but it's going around your lungs and your veins and your body. No, 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 this was the bad blood. This was the bad blood. So while they're doing this, mm -hmm. I'm going to hack down, like, a, a big tree branch, uh, shove it in the ground a little bit further away from us, hack off the thing's head, and just nail it to the top of this Yes. Forest. That's yeah, so fucking yeah. metal sand out. No. Perhaps now we can get some rest. Yes, let's turn in, gentlemen. <laughs> you, yeah. So Sandow starts to hunker down. Kozel, you've hitched the horse, and the horse is still like going nuts at the sight of this and the smell of it. Um, 
What do you what do you guys want to do? You guys want to stick around there in the bushes in the rain? Try to find some sort of shelter or do you want to press on through the night? I, I think always prefer to stop and to rest and to speak with my compatriots about our current mm-hmm. situation and how they feel but it's up to them mainly I could care less like the horse is tired and the ogre's tired uh, no offense Sandow and unless that racing snail wants to pull the cart there's no reason to keep going stop saying racing snail I don't know guys I think their friends might come back man that racing snail I think he might be kind of brave, man. Well, yeah, I mean, as, he, he's of course going to want to come uh, back for the body. It was his friend. We should give it back to him. As Kozel says that, you start to hear more more howling than you did before. You start to hear greater numbers in the distance. I can pull this thing no further. We're leaving. We're <laughs> leaving behind soon, all the goods. And in greater numbers. Well, we do have a horse, right? Yeah, how many horses did we have on our cart? Uh, You have a horse. But the horse is is in great condition because for some reason Sandow's been pulling the cart. Well, Sandow is stronger than the horse, so that makes sense. You're not wrong. He is stronger than the horse. So maybe we let the horse go? Maybe we should all ride on the horse, man. Because, like, Sandow's the only big one. You guys are tiny, and I'm old and skinny, man. Well, Let's I mean, do that. I may be we able can't... to keep up, so why don't... Yeah, all of you load up onto the horse. But the hemp and... No, what, 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 nothing, nothing about this form of transportation is making any sense to me. <laughs> I call middle guys. I, mean, I all... call back, so nobody's <laughs> spooning me, I suppose. Sure, and you still... You hear more rustling and howling. And just grab... Bushes. But, grab but, what? The, the liquor's on the wagon. <laughs> That's what I'm small. saying. Why aren't we on the wagon? And why doesn't the horse pull the wagon and then all four of us ride it? It doesn't. I don't understand. We won't make any time. Horse in a wagon moves slower than a guy on foot. Okay, well, first off, sand out. You're a beautiful, handsome candy magnate. You should take some time to sit down, and we should let the horse pull us for a while. Like, obviously, we're just going to be assailed by mutants the whole fucking way, so it doesn't matter if we get there in a day or in two days. So I say we beat the ass off of anything that comes near us with a fucking tentacle attached to it, and B, we get drunk. No Can't matter argue what, with that. <laughs> no matter what decision we come to, Waldo's going to be in the back of this wagon picking, like, the three best vintages of wine and trying to decide which two will fit in his bag. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Gotta make a hard choice here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a platform America needs in 2020. That's right. Need Blort. Um, all right. So you guys make some hard decisions, grab the alcohol that you can, you load up and you head off back into the night, beat anything with a tentacle and let's get drunk. Yeah. That's about sums it up. So you guys head off, and uh, again, you're you're traveling on, and you can make out shapes, and you hear noises as you're you're continuing on, and you, you go on for what seems like another hour, and another hour after that, and the horse is getting tired, and it's getting it's getting exhausted, and things are slowing down as you go, and you're you're worried that uh, these things are going to catch up to you once again, but in greater numbers. But just as everything looks to be at its bleakest, you can see in the distance, you can see light. You can, light off to the side of the road you guys get closer and closer and you see that there's a wall that looks to be oh maybe a 12 to 15 foot wall surrounding what looks to be uh three buildings inside this walled area it's also situated next to a river and there's a there's a small ferry house there as well and you can see light from within side and possibly sanctuary in this horrible night of blood double time it um for your reference, there's a map. So that's you're you're entering up there. The stream can't see this, but this is more for your reference. There's no battles or anything taking place on here, but just best illustrates where the group is. Here, let's put your let's put your carriage right there to represent you. So you guys are coming in up there. You've got this big walled building and surrounding area. You've got a ferry house. Down to the south there, along the river, the water's crashing and beating in the wind. And you can see light from the large building inside, shining in the in the darkness. 
Uh, I just want to point out, I see what you did there, Matt. What? What did? They, what did they do there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it took me a second. Yeah. So you, you see some activity in there, and you can hear the the howling and the panting and the crashing in the bushes as you get closer and closer okay. to this we, wall. We gotta get in there, guys. We gotta get in there quick. So, so grab these bottles and let's go. Let's double time it. I'll take a bottle, man. No, no, no. You gotta take like four bottles. Four. Four. But I only have two hands, man. Just exhorting the horse to move faster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you guys are pushing this horse and you're carrying on and pressing on and you get to these, this big walled outcropping of buildings. As you get closer, yeah, your assessment is right. Those, those are like 15 foot tall walls. And you're, you're kind of standing up on the carriage and you're peeking in. And you don't see anybody milling about, but you see you see lights on in the, the, the largest of the three buildings in there. It looks like there's maybe a stable, um, a carriage house, and then a large a large building and the building actually has a sign hanging out of it and says the hooded man in and you can see silhouettes of people in the windows milling about inside the inn well now that we're this close are we still being chased you can still hear like panting and howling in the bushes nearby but they seem to have kind of backed off a little bit but you can still sense them and, and hear them nearby but you're close to what seems to be some inhabited areas. So that they backed off a little bit. I think we should go inside, guys. Yep. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, ta I'll, I'll toss Kozo a gold and say, go get us rooms. <laughs> yeah. So there's a, there's a large, big double gate uh, on next to the road as you pull up. Oh. There's no man standing there. There's nobody positioned at the gate. Uh, and it's cl it's currently closed. How tall is the gate? The gate is also 15 feet high. Ugh. I'll go knock on the doors, man. Yep. I'll go knock. Yeah, and Kozla, you get out and you wander over to the gates and you start rapping on the gates. And it's making a hell of a noise. Um, like, you take the chain and the lock that's on there and you start, like, rattling it against the wooden gate um, but nobody seems to answer. As you're standing at the gate, you notice that at the ferry house to the south that there's a uh, there's a raft that's winched uh, on the other side of the river by means of rope. Okay, 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 Sandow, uh, can you can you throw me over the gate, and I'll make sure that we open it. <laughs> um. Actually, Sando will test uh, how strong the gate uh, gates are uh, and just give it uh, several just really mighty <laughs> just doo, doo, doo. see if maybe uh, you can break the bar from the other side. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Uh, it's very, very, very well secured. Um, so just like a Athletics. little bit of strength is not going to do it, but you can go ahead and make me a check. Like you can always critically succeed at something. Um, so I'll never tell you no, uh, but you want to, what are you using? You're using your brawn? Yep. So make me... Athletics. I mean, I'm mm. just pure, like, throwing all my body weight into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking a simple melee test for this, and, um... Well, that's if... not brawn, though. That's combat. Oh, that is combat. Yeah, athletics test. Uh, and we're gonna do this at a hard... <laughs> yeah, look at that. And that's why we roll, people. Yeah. That is why we roll. <laughs> so the Hulk what over like? here. How do you, you lean back? What do you what do you do? How do you how do you open that's it? He gate? just approaches it, does the Kirk double double fist <laughs> to the top of the door, and you just hear this crack as the beam on the other side just breaks. <laughs> yeah, and the door swings open. Now you've got this gate door swinging open that's no longer lockable, and you can hear skittering and panting and howling in the yep. bushes near you so pull everybody in and uh, i assume like on the other side the bar is like broken in half yeah exactly so, like one of the half pieces may still be long enough to stick in there right so that's right yeah 
rebar it. And while he was uh, miraculously busting down that door, since Kozel uh, loves pain so much, I loaded him with every bottle of alcohol I could uh, to get through that door. All right. Uh, I just want to okay, ask, man. Did, did, did Seth just give us... I'm uh, sorry, Plort, not Kozel, Plort. Did, did Seth cheer while he's currently away from his keyboard? Uh, it looks like it, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Am I seeing things? Is that not Seth? Ubermoss? All right. Um, just checking. Cheers yes. from the bathroom. Yeah, exactly. He's sitting on his phone. Uh, so, you bust open the gate, and... Uh, yeah, he's on his phone. And, um, yeah, it swings open, and the beam on the other side, you, you kind of kind of jury rig it together and you put it place it back on there but it's not as secure as it once was and um on the so other take, side on take the other, the other side, half then and kind of wedge it so we got the partial beam in and then the other beam kind of wedged in <laughs> yeah yeah it's 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 getting the job done if anywhere you pull up and look at it it looks close but uh you're not sure if it could oh, really, like hold itself up to an ogre smash again <laughs> that's why sandow was our leader what, did you really say that, Waldo? You'd never admit that publicly. No, no, that's why I put it on Twitch. I, yeah. I wouldn't say it in character. <laughs> yeah, so the large building on the inside of this walled uh, area, or fortified area, is an inn. You see the signs swinging in the wind, the hooded man inn out front. Uh, you can hear the sounds of chattering and talking inside. You can't really make out what's being said. Um, to the east of the inn are two smaller buildings one of them looks like a coach house and the other a stable and from the stable you can hear the sounds of like horses like in a frenzy kicking and kind of neighing and baying and and kind of screeching in the night look around uh mm -hmm. like like right inside the gate does it look like something's happened here recently? Is there blood pools on the ground? Is there the signs of battle? Yeah. Um, it does not. Because it is raining and has been raining all night, it, uh, it's all muddy and messed up. And really all you see is water, pools of water and mud everywhere. Is there anyone inside? I will be the first one into shelter. Uh, you can hear voices, and you see you see silhouettes through the window. Do you want to banging on the doors and? Oh the wait! I, I grab him by the, <laughs> the, the scruff. <laughs> the scruff. <laughs> uh, Kozel, my good man, would you be able to have a peek into one of those windows without making yourself known? Something oh. does not seem right. Yeah, um, man. I don't think they know me anyway, but I can sure give a look. Yeah, you can hear... Yeah, you get closer to one of the windows there, Coles, and you can hear laughing and talking. You can't really make out what they're saying. Uh, you can hear chairs scraping on the floor as people are getting up. Uh, but it looks like all the curtains have been drawn, and that's why you're only able to see silhouettes. And you kind of poke your head, and you make your way around the building, and you kind of look in the odd window here and there. And you see, like, there's little cracks, but not enough to really make out what's going on between uh, the curtains. Hey, man, like, they got all the curtains drawn. I don't see anything. The stable house. Um, who's good with animals? Anyone? I'm good with animals, man. Hmm. Let's see what's disturbing them. My guess, bodies. Bodies of whoever should be manning this gate. Let's go take a look. Yeah, so you guys head over to the stables, and yeah, the sounds of the horses neighing and, and hitting their hooves on the ground in there and up against the walls of the stables is super loud and disturbing. Um, you guys get close to the doors. Are you just going to swing the door open there, Kozel, and head on in to see what's going on? Or is Sando going to grab you <laughs> before you do that? No, nah, man. I'll be, like, uh, careful and, like, I'll peek in a little bit. Yeah, so as soon as you open the door a little bit, a bolt of lightning lets off, and the horses charge towards the door to escape when they see the door opening. 
Uh, you can go ahead and make me a challenging animal handle test to try and calm or subdue these animals as they are heading to the door. And you see six horses in total when you peek in. There's six horses in there. I passed it, man. You passed it. So how do you calm these horses down as they start to... As they launch to the door and leading to the group to possibly trample them as they as they bust their way out. Uh, I say, whoa, Nelly, like, be cool, man. I, like, grab their reins and, like, uh, circle them up, man. Yeah, you guys watch Kozel. He's like a regular horse whisperer. These things are spooked and just going mad and he just puts up his hands and... Brings them over and talks to them gently, and it's really like sweet and stuff, man. Sandow, have you let go of my scruff yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> I oh. would be in awe, but instead, I'm trying to gnaw on an ogre hand. Um, the horses, though, are, are trying to get out. They're they're the door is now open. You have them calm, but they they just keep pushing their ways towards going getting out. If you want to try and bring them back into the stables you're gonna have to make another roll as they are doing everything in their power to to resist going back in is the close gate closed? closed uh did you go inside and close the gate behind you like the, the the door to the stable is that what you're asking sorry no the we're inside the compound right yes so the gate to the compound is closed and sandow did kind of jury rig a uh, a beam or the wood that was broken back in there uh, I think that if the the horses are acting like they don't want to go in there, like, I don't want to make them do anything they don't want to do. So, uh, once they're calm, I'll just kind of maybe let them go. Like, they aren't getting out. Yeah. Yeah, if you would let them into the yard, they, they start to skitter about, and uh, they get over to, like, the, the gate that you guys crashed to get in there. Uh, and they're all... It looks like they're they're pooling and gathering as far away from the stable as possible. And then they're look trotting inside. around. Yeah, what's, what's got problems? Look inside. Yeah, you guys look inside and there's the area where they're all stabled. Uh, and up above them is a hayloft. Uh, you don't see anything on the main level kind of poking around um, that may have, may have spooked them. You guys... You know, you search every corner, and you wait till there's lightning cracks for light to shine in here, and you don't find anything other than mud and, and horse shit everywhere. On the main area. There is the uh, the hayloft above you, and there's a ladder leading up there. I just asked Sanda, what do you propose that we do about this situation this is boys i'm tempted to simply abscond with some horses here and carry on <laughs> something's not right here as long as we take the wagon with us whatever you want to do i don't think we're getting the wagon anywhere in this rain man Well, there are several horses. We can bundle what we want onto some, lead the rest out. Leave the cart oh, behind. Okay, yeah. you know what? I, I am a man who will compromise. So we'll take the beer, we'll take the wine, and we'll <laughs> leave the wagon. Will you let me down now? This really hurt <laughs> my neck. I'm actually holding him like he was a lantern. So I mean, <laughs> moving him around, looking inside the barn. Every, everybody can uh, make me a, uh, a standard uh, awareness check as you're poking around in the in the stables. Whew. I failed that. <laughs> Jeff says man up and head up the ladder. Um, Sandow, you notice there is blood dripping from the hayloft above. Yes. I, I don't even need to look. That's the guards. <laughs> there are horses. We're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, wait. It, 
You said there's blood up there? <laughs> I'm just leading him over to the horses. Isn't that how you use a, a halfling in a dungeon like a hooded lantern? <laughs> If there are people there, I can help them. I, no, I they're they're well dungeon. beyond help. Well beyond. I don't know that you get the beer, get the wine. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> I am. I am an excellent surgeon. I could so help them. <laughs> if I need to tie him onto a horse, I'm tying <laughs> him onto a horse. You are not putting him down. All right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so you want to head back and uh, try and get some horses and get out of here? Yeah. Yeah. So you guys head back out of the stables, and um, you start making your way through Chuck, the... Chuck, stop. Chuck, stop that oh, immediately. Oh, he did it. He did it. He's put, he put blur, or horsed. Horsed is his background. Look at those that dead green screen, eyes. That it's a cursed crying. image. Oh, half of you. Yeah. I, I will. I will next time. Trust me. It's happening. Oh, that was the best. No, no more horse. If I, didn't I can't, have, if, <laughs> I can't deal with that. The game, uh, and it would go on stream. I would, I would change it right now. Uh, yeah. So as you guys are making your way back out into the, uh, out into the main area here of his compound, uh, the door to the inn swings open and, uh, standing there, you see a, uh, you see a road warden, which is like a highway policeman of sorts, and uh, he uh, using the light from shining within the hooded uh, the hooded monk, the hooded man. Sorry, he's squinting. He goes, "Oi, who's there? Who's milling about?" It's I, the hero of Vorberg. They call out and to say the horses got out, just rounding them up. The hero of what? Why are they horses out? The hero out? of Vorberg. A Lightning strike! A... It scared them. I'm just... We've got it under control. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to convince him that uh, horses just got out. We're just rounding them up. So you're, 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 you want to shoo him away? <laughs> you're trying to convince him? Yeah, no, I want him to... I, because it's raining. It's hard yeah, to yeah, see. Yeah. I'm trying to convince him that we're part of whatever and we're just rounding the horses up. Sure, and sure. I'm reassuring that I'm a hero and that nothing could go I just uh, shove my fist in his mouth so I am very yeah. <laughs> we have he, never uh, failed at anything we have attempted do not be worried sir he, he, he goes oh, on fire. how did them damn horses get out allow me oh give you give you a hand how did you get in here we uh we knocked man you knocked and you know when you're a hero doors just open wide you know, it is crazy. Whatever you want, you get. He's mumbling this over my hand. <laughs> he, uh, Whatever you want, you uh, Well, let's get them horses back in there. And once you get inside, it's catch bloody death out here in this rain. Did you know that your gate was laying open during this storm? It was? Uh, this trouble afoot. Yeah, man. It might have been that big cow we saw back there, a man. big cow? What are you talking about? There's a monstrous cow back there. And, like, there's a whole herd of racing snails. And huh? they're gonna try and get in here soon. What sort I, of We evil couldn't have see what stripes they night? had. What sort of evil? Oh, this is the worst. You're, you're lucky you got a hero here with you. Hey, Matt, is he approached? Is he closer? Uh, he's moved closer, you guys, and he's, he's, he's wanting right. to help with the horses. Trying to see if anything doesn't fit, like the road warden clothing, if it's too big or too small, yeah. uh, if it's splattered with blood, anything like that. Yeah, um, you are not able to get a real good look at him in the in the darkness, in the dead of the night, um, to really size up. Well, uh, he's coming towards us to help, he is right? Coming towards so you, yeah. yeah, so as he's getting closer, you know, when I'm able to see any of this, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, his the the yeah, the outfit or the the uniform seems to fit him properly. Uh but you're not able to make out too many details. You can't even really make out his face. He's, you can see he's got like dark hair. He's got black hair and uh, and uh kind of a uh, squinted up angry looking face he's more a little annoyed than anything out here in the rain but yeah you're not able to get a real good look of 
and size him up out here. If I count his eyes, do I stop at two? You do stop at two. <laughs> and you stop at ten fingers. When he reaches Prove out to, to grab the reins on a horse. to right now, sir, that you do not have tentacles. Tentacles? Why would I have tentacles? If you are one of the absolute horrors that we've encountered on the road, I just want to make sure that there's nothing about you that's wrong. Are you mocking my accent? Sorry, I'm quite intoxicated. I've heard you speak, and now I'm speaking <laughs> like you speak. I'm sorry. Oh, let's get them horses back in the stable. That's what I've been saying. Let's get them horses back in the stable. I am going to be glaring at Blort for drinking too much of my alcohol. I'm going to be glaring at the hero of Warburg for glaring at me. Okay. Um, yeah, so help him get the horses in the stall. Yeah, so the, the horses are being brought back in. Um, they're still really jittery. And uh, they're, they're, they're fighting going in there. Right, so, so, okay, so he's right next to us now then, right? Yes. So I point up at the hayloft and say, what's with all the blood? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Good question, what is up with the blood? That is why the horses broke free. Question here. Do we have all the horses in the stable by this point? Uh, you have them at the door, and you're trying to get them in right now. They're not okay. as spooked and jittery um, at this point. While you guys are standing down there now and looking up the hayloft after Sandow pointed out, you can see that there appears to be a trap door that's open on the roof that wasn't open before, leading from the hayloft up onto the roof. And you can see the rain and the, the uh, occasional flash of lightning. Ooh. And that was not... You did not notice that open above the hayloft last time you were in here. Take several quick steps back so that I can see the roof of this thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead and make me a... We're going to do a test here. Make me a... <laughs> Routine awareness test. As you're looking out at, up at the roof. You wait till there's a flash of lightning. You don't make out anything, Blort. Bert, you're standing there. Bert, or Sandow, you're standing there where there's a flash of lightning. You swear that you can see just, like, a little bit of a silhouette. Almost like eyes all of a sudden in the lightning. And you see the, a shape slink back on right. the far pull side of the, sling of the out. roof. Pull my sling out. Load a bullet into it. To start, you know, whirling it until I... If the next flash of lightning, if I can see it again, I'm just going to let one go. <laughs> yeah, you're standing there and you're you're twirling your bolt or your slingshot. And the roar, roar one's, oh, it's, uh, what's going in the big fella? There's something on the roof. Something on the roof something. in this weather. Nothing could last up there. It's wet. It'd fall on its arse. Not if it's got five legs. <laughs> That's ridiculous. There's nothing up there. You, uh, you've you've had too much of this terrible weather. You're coming down with something quick. Let's get these horses in here and get out of here. What's with this blood? What 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 is the blood you're talking, speaking of? And he sees the blood dripping down. Anybody go up there to investigate? Blot does not mind whether or not he lives or dies, and ascends the ladder. Yeah, the the road warden will go uh, up with you. And, I mean, that's um, unnecessary. He joins you up the ladder, and you guys go up there, up in the hayloft, and you can see uh, like a mass uh, in the hay, all bloodied and bruised. And you get closer, and it looks like uh, there's a man lying there, and his, his its head his head has been smashed in. And you take a closer look, and it looks like something's been gnawing on one of its arms. He goes, good God, that's one of the bandits that attacked earlier tonight. How did he... I stowed their bodies in the carriage house. How did it get in here? I think it came through the roof. Oh, I'm not up there. Never mind. 
chosen. How am get I supposed to know the answer to literally any question that you ask? Well, so. you were in here earlier. Did you see anything? These men, I, there was a couple of I bandits there. presumptuous that... of you to assume that I was up here earlier. I literally saw the same blood dripping that you did. We are investigating together. All of this information is new to both of us at the same time. You were in here earlier. I certainly was not. You, the big fellow, pointed out the blood. Being the big fella, his name is fucking Sandow. He's a great lord. He's an heir to a candy title. How dare you? You should be ashamed of yourself. He's the great assistant to the hero of Vorberg. We came down here seeking shelter. We noticed your horses were astray. We rounded them up. We noticed some blood licking from the attic of your fucking barn, and we investigate that, and now we're under investigation for showing up and trying to give you a hand. I can't believe this. All right, settle down, little fella. We'll get you inside and get you a drink. Little fella! <laughs> I am all within my right mind to burn this barn down in this moment, if not for the request of my glorious leader, Sandow. I suppose we should get him up here, huh? If that's what you want, Mr. Accusatory. Well, if I bring him up here as well, we could... Stand now! <laughs> I shout down the ladder. A little busy here, a little busy. He's <laughs> saying that we're not heroes and that this is in some way, shape, or form our fault. And I've told him that you, our glorious leader, can lead his thoughts in a more positive direction, if you wouldn't mind joining us in this truly daunting conversation about who is and isn't a bad guy. More interested in what's on the roof. What's on the roof, then? <laughs> yeah, there's a ladder leading up onto the roof. and I just climb it, ignoring there's the There's rain and blood smeared on the ladder. Uh, looks like it might be a little treacherous, but yeah, you want to try and climb up there? I rub the blood on my face and climb the ladder. <laughs> War paint. Yeah, there's the torrential <laughs> rain pouring down. Uh, you can go ahead and make me a... Um, Uh, you, you, you climb the ladder without making a test, and you poke your head up above, and, um, as you do so, on the far side of the, uh, the roof, you see this, this horrific creature. It's like a man, humanoid man shape, but it's got these, like, suction cups all over it. All over its legs and As it arms, and its tentacles, huh? <laughs> and it's and it's like cl it's using them to cling to the to the roof. The roof is just like the rain is pouring down and going everywhere, and you you don't think you could get your footing up there. But this thing looks at you, and it's got it's got actually like four spider legs covered in suckers, and it looks at you, and it's got like. The eyes of a spider where its eyes of a man should be. And it lets out like a shriek. And it I starts to scuttle. Go back down the motherfucking ladder. <laughs> <laughs> and it scuttles down the far side of the far side of the roof and like down the wall. I jump back down the ladder and I scream, Sundale! Waldo and Kozel, there's an extreme situation on the roof if you would not mind joining me. There's a fucking spider puss up here. If you would fucking get up here, we gotta find something. And I just, I just wait for it to approach me. I'm just ready with my maul what, under the opening. What you there, little one? Again with the little one. There's a fucking spider octopus, horrible creature on your roof about to come down here and fucking literally rip all of our hearts out. What but if that's not a problem about? for you, you that's fine. About? I'm just saying. He, he pokes his, he climbs the ladder and pokes his head up there and goes, there's nothing up here. And he climbs Are you back calling down. me a fucking liar? I see oh, anything I see. on the outside. Do I see it come no, down? No, so building? it went on the far side, like, All like right. over the wall. So it, it crawled away from Blort and over the wall. So it doesn't matter to me one bit whether or not you think it's up there or not. I'm just going to climb down and talk to my mates about how we're going to deal with the problem. And you can, you can or cannot fuck with us as much as you want about it. I'm just saying, I've never told a law in my law from, like, fucking Mr. Abraham Lincoln over here. <laughs> Isn't that George Washington? Whoever didn't tell a lie, I'm just like him. <laughs> and I'm not even American. 
Uh. Oh, all right, all right. Calm down, calm down. Let's get you inside, get you a drink. What kind of fucking calmness to be had in this situation where there's octopus spiders running about your roof, destroying your horses and opening your gate? Oh, there's no spider pusses crawling about. I'm saying there's no spider pusses, huh? Well, just come on over here. Let's just let's do a quick lap about your about your barn and see exactly how many spider pusses there are assailing it. Enemy mates. He walks to the side of each side of the barn, which connects to the wall. There's nothing in here. Your, your little friend has lost his lost his mind. Yeah, I'm like most certainly the one who has lost his mind. If so if let's I, just uh, sit inside and have a drink and pretend nothing's going on and everything is completely fine and cool and chill. So uh, if he comes out and he says uh, that to me, um, yes. Yeah, he's going yeah, so, on and on about spider pusses on the ceiling. Yeah. So uh, look at the wall where, uh, so the roof comes down and then the wall's right there. Any yes. blood? Um, yeah, there's there's a trail of blood off the roof and right, down yeah. the wall. Point it out. Well, something has just crossed your roof and crossed your wall. He pokes his head out there. Bloody hell. What, what is going on this wretched night? First we had bandits, now we got spider pusses. Am I still being held by the scruff? I don't. No, no. no. <laughs> you were left long ago. <laughs> so I mean, you... like, if there's that much blood, I can go help. Yeah, you hear you this body can... up there. You want to scuttle up there? I, I, I might as well see if anyone needs any help. So I'm just gonna go up that ladder. Yeah, you go up the ladder, and you're also greeted by the the body of a of a man with its head bludgeoned in. And uh, you also, when examining it, you see that there's a uh, there's gnaw marks on its uh, on its arm. Just fucking people getting shoot up, but yeah, let's sit and have a drink and pretend that nothing's wrong and that you know, everything is completely fine about the blood leaking through all three floors of your fucking building over here. What you suggest I'm, I'm we do in this, this terrible night? We go out there and fight spider pusses? Come on now. Uh, are you just good in hot fight a spider puss? <laughs> well, we got. Are you a fucking coward? Do I look like a coward? I slayed two bandits tonight that tried to take our lives. Yeah, I bet they had two fucking legs, you big baby. Let's get out of here. I mean, I could amputate his head, but I don't know how much it would help. Is that one all right? He's already dead. Why would he cut off his head? I mean, like, it, 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 if something's hurt, you cut it off. I do not understand the... The breathing. scientific methodology behind your request. He's not breathing, man. Okay, so, like, you said there's another one upstairs that is breathing that I should check on? No, the one upstairs is the one that I believe is threatening all of our lives currently. But it's breathing, so I should check on it. So I mean, I'm just sort gonna, of. You should check on it in such a way stage. that you stab it repeatedly with your bone saw is how you should check on it. I'm going to climb up the stairs and poke my head out. Yeah, you climb up the stairs and you just see, like, water pouring down the roof. And you see a trail of blood leading off towards the direction of the wall. Okay, it's, listen, it's being... that's a lot of blood. Do yeah. you need medical attention? You Do you mean me? You get no answer. <laughs> you get bored. If, if you need me to help, I am a surgeon. I will help. Do you need medical attention? There's no answer. Just lightning Blort crashing. Blort is just standing incredibly incredulously at all of this madness. Furious that no one is taking action. I'm just going to start sprinting in circles around the house until I can see this fucking thing wherever it's hiding. So you want to go on the other side of the wall and start running around the compound? Yeah, I'll throw my fucking hammer at it, dude. There's a giant fucking spider puss on the side of this dude's wall killing people. I'm fucking furious. I want to help this guy. Warden, did you say that that body was in the carriage house? It right? was in the carriage house, just uh, just south of here. There was a couple of bandits came in here. We welcome them, just like you fellas. Uh, gave them shelter, and they tried to take our lives, so I had to do what I ha did, and I put them down, and I left them Oh, like, yeah, you're so carriage. brave. Those two bandits had to combine one half the legs of the spider puss. We should get the fuck after it. And I just sprint off. Just gonna open the the, the gate because there's another gate over by the stables, and uh, and the carriage house. There's a there's a gate there. He's gonna run over, swing it open, and start running around the compound, the outside of the compound. Is is that correct? Well, I, 
I absolutely am looking for wherever the spider puss could have gone, and I'm going to that place. All right, I, so I'm poking my head out the roof. Do I see it anywhere? You don't. You don't. You're sitting there watching, and you don't see any sign of it. Um, all of you who are on the, 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 the main floor near the, the door of the stable, you see Blort darting towards the other gate and uh, starting to throw its latch open and uh, shouting about slaying spider pusses and proceeding to run outside the gate. Coming from. Um, and you, uh, and the road warning, oh, get your little friend in here. Who knows what's out there on a night like tonight? I think he said it was a spider puss, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I have been saying, spider man. Spider pusses? I ain't gonna fight no spider puss. Who knows what it's else because you're a bloody coward there. and you don't care what Nothing happens to the attic or the second floor of your fucking barn, man. Spider, spider pusses? Right, then. I'll go with you, little fella. We'll take a look around. We'll poke around, and once you're, you're pleased... I get right in this dude's fucking face. I'm like an inch away from his fucking his navel because I'm so short, and I'm like, you make me a promise right fucking now. If we see a spider puss, you will give your life to defend me destroying the spider puss. Do you understand? <laughs> um... Do you want to uh, do you want to roll an intimidation for me on this uh, this, this fellow? Is that what you're trying to do? Wow. It's all, all right, all right. The bravery on this one. If we encounter a spider puss, I will stand my ground with you. That's all I've been asking for. All right, perfect. <laughs> so, do I see where this blood has been coming from? Uh, it looks like it trailed. From the body up the ladder and onto the roof. The body with the bludgeoned head? Yes. Something was gnawing on its arm and it looks like it, you know, recreating this scene. It scuttled up the ladder and out of here. The the horses seem to be calm now. I'm going to try and uh, recover the body. Bring it uh, inside. <laughs> oh, you want to just, like, toss it off the hayloft? and? Well, I mean, like, I... I thought I was poking my head up out out the roof. Am I not? Uh yeah, but the body's below you. The the body's laying in the in the hayloft. It's just a trail of blood from the body up onto the roof. Oh, okay. So okay. the body's down below you in the hayloft. But the blood he was killed on the roof and then the blood like trailed oh, it down looks to like the hayloft. Or or whatever killed it uh tr left a trail of blood also onto the roof. Either or. You're not too sure. Either drag dragged it in there or left a bunch of blood on its way out. All right, well, I'm just going to go up on the roof, fight the rain, and look for the spider puss. Yeah, go ahead and make me a standard coordination test, please, uh, when you get up on the roof to try and maintain your footing with this rain and the water pouring down all around you. That's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, I've had Oh, all right, so you get up there, and you're all kind of shaky and whatnot, and, uh, but you find your footing, and you start to kind of like shimmy across the roof after you slip a little bit one time. Just inching forward. Yeah, inching forward. So, Blort, you're on the outside with uh, with the Road Warden. And, what uh, is your name, Road Warden? My name is Ants. 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 <laughs> Do you have Ants in your palms, but you Ants? Come again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was being rude. Go on. Yeah. So you guys look up to the roof and you see uh, you see Waldo shimmying up there. And uh, you guys come around the corner, and uh, yeah, we'll leave off there because we're at our we're at our two hour limit, and we'll pick it up in two weeks time. Cliff, am I gonna live till next week? Maybe. Find out if there is really a spider puss next week on the Grim and Perilous Twitch channel. I've had half a bottle of tequila, and I'm closing the channel. Goodbye. All right, so um, <laughs> yes, we're not playing this every week. We're doing. Oh, that just really screwed up the cameras. Thank you, Seth, oh. for 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 leaving the call. Microphone drop. <laughs> uh, so we're we're all kind of shifted now. People are wondering what's going on. So we are going to be doing this every other week. So it won't be next week Thursday. It'll be the following Thursday when we are back with this. So it'll be 
Thursday, September 19th, we'll pick it up again, and it's going to be every two weeks. This is really weird looking at. Um, <laughs> but uh, thank you for joining us for the first ongoing session of Blood, Sweets, and Laudanum. As, uh, you know, we investigate this little compound, and we murderize and critically kill um, bovine-headed mutants in the middle of the road. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back. There's no game this Friday. Unfortunately, um, we've had, well, not unfortunately, fortunately for everybody, we've, we've had a lot of games this week, so I'm taking Friday off. Um, so, uh, this Saturday, we are doing a very special character creation for Mutant Year Zero. I'm going to be running Mutant Year Zero once a month for a bunch of the Grim and Perilous folks, and we're doing character creation and arc creation this Saturday and then two Saturdays from now, which is the 21st, we will do our first session and then it'll be monthly after that. So we're going to have um, Adam Rose, Jennifer Ford, Mike the Boss Bossler, um, Jeremy Jones, and the elusive Ken Duque joining us for Mutineer Zero. So it should be fun. We're all big fans of Free League Publishing. I forgot their name for a second there after I said we're big fans. Um, and, hey, if you guys enjoyed Zweihander and you don't already own a copy, and if you're looking for the adventure we ran tonight, which is known as Night of Blood, where we started tonight, it is available on DriveThruRPG, and we have an affiliate link down below, um, so you can purchase it there. I looked today, some folks have used this link and purchased things, so it helps out the channel whenever you do so, and we really, really appreciate it. But we'll sign off for this week, and I will be back Saturday night with Mutineer Zero. Thank you, everybody who joined us. Thank you for the bits and the cheers. And all the comments, we appreciate you guys being here. Have a and great thank evening. you, Matt, for running that excellent session. Yeah, yeah. my pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Good night from a really messed up overlay. Yeah. <laughs>